Now I would describe that uh, if we, how we can design a stripping vessel or an aeration vessel. We've looked into the two film theory that tells us what's actually determining the mass transfer of a substance from a water phase to a gas phase or vice versa. Now I'm trying to look at how can I actually figure out something about uh, how much uh, flow of air should I uh, have if I want to strip off uh, something from a certain flow of uh, water. This is an ideal situation I'm looking at now. So the ideal thing comes into play that we say that there is uh, equilibrium between gas and water uh, in this process. What I'm looking at is some kind of a vessel that I have where I have, for instance, water coming in at the top. I have something filling my vessel. It could be some beads uh, of plastic or some plastic elements that generate a huge surface area of the water. The water is trickling down, going out, uh, and, vi and reverse wise, I have air coming in at the bottom where the water is going out. So here I've got clean air with uh, nothing of the gas that I want to strip off in the air. It's going in the reverse direction and escaping the vessel at the top. I have a flow of gas in cubic meter per hour and a flow of water also in cubic meter per hour, and I want to figure out what is this, how much gas flow do I need in order to strip the water out, uh, strip the substance off the water, giving an ideal situation where at any, any point in the process I will have some kind of equilibrium between water and gas, so um, Henry's law is in force. So this is my assumption, instant equilibrium. That means that if I'm looking at what's going out of water in the vessel, well the concentration um, or, or the gas going out, the concentration of the substance in the gas um, going out is in equilibrium with what is in the water coming in. Um, and the equilibrium constant here is, is Henry's law. If I make a mass balance of substance, I know from this vessel what is going in must come out. So if I'm looking at water, the flow of water coming in must come out, the flow of air coming in must come out, but also for the substance dissolved in the air and water, what's going in is going out. Going in is something in the water. I've got something in the raw water, a concentration. I have a flow of water. That's what's going in because the flow of air, I assume I have nothing, uh, no substance in it, so that element of going in is left out of my mass balance. Going out. I have the flow of water going out with a, a concentration of the substance left in the water. I have a flow of gas going out with a concentration of a substance in the gas. I can organize things and uh, put this element over on the other side with a negative uh, sign in front and I can uh, put the water flow outside a parenthesis. Then I've got things looking like this and then I can divide uh, by things and I can get my air to water ratio, so my minimum air to water ratio expressed as the concentration of the substance in the water coming in minus the concentration going out, dividing uh, with the concentration of the substance in the gas going out. Now the concentration of what's in the gas going out. If my assumption about Henry's uh, the constant and the equilibrium of the gas constant being in place, then I can substitute the concentration in the gas by uh, Henry's constant times the concentration in the water going in. So instead of this I will write Henry's constant times the concentration in the water going in. If my concentration going out, if my stripping process is efficient, uh, the concentration in the outgoing water is going to be close to zero. And that means this, is, this can be left out. And then I've got something that I can take out of my equation and it ends up being minimum air to water ratio is 1 over Henry's constant. So this is a, an ideal situation where I could say if I really have super ideal conditions I could actually have a flow of air that only needs to be as high as 1 over Henry's constant. Uh, the flow of air to the flow of water. So if I have a Henry's constant of 1 well then I need a flow of air equal to the flow of water in an ideal situation. If I'm looking at another uh, way or another situation 
that could be uh, another ideal process. This is the co-current process where water and air is going in and follows each other down through the vessel and both water and air is going out at the at the bottom. Now um, my assumption is again I have Henry's constant, uh, I have Henry's law enforced so the concentration in the gas going out is in equilibrium with the concentration of the substance in the water going out. Um, again I will assume that I have a clean gas coming in and I have something in the water that I know that this I want to strip off. Mass balance wise again what's coming in equal what goes out so my mass balance incoming equal to zero I have some water coming in with some substance in it and totally just as before I have things going out. That again leaves me with, with uh, I can shorten things up a little bit and I end up with this equation. Now in this case I can again substitute what's going out in the gas phase with Henry's constant times what's coming out in the water phase because now I have the equilibrium between the gas going out and the water going out. So not like before where the water was coming in here but now the water has has been stripped off but not completely to the air so the air is not clean here it has a concentration of something so I can substitute the gas concentration in the outgoing with the Henry's constant times the concentration of the substance in the water going out because this is where I have the equilibrium so now I've got a, a different equation and uh, I can't really shorten it up much so I've got to pull in the numbers let's again say well if I have a Henry's constant of 1 what is then the situation uh, let's assume I have a concentration of something in the water let's say methane uh, in the incoming 2 milligram uh, per liter um, I want it reduced to let's say um, so this was incoming so out I want less than 0 0.1 milligram per liter and I need to know a Henry's constant well for methane it's in the order of 25 so let's take a look at that. The minimum air to water ratio will then become 2 milligram minus 0.1 divided by 25 times the concentration going out 0.1. So now I've got something close to, well, it's 1.9 minus 2.5. So I have a, a, a ratio of air to water, which is... Uh, a little less than one. Had it been the ideal countercurrent process, my minimum air to water ratio would have been 1 over Henry's constant, so 1 over 25. So much smaller than the one for the, the co current process. Still, this is an ideal situation. So, in a real, a real life situation, I might have uh, things uh, not looking exactly like a co current process or a countercurrent process. I might have a, a, a reaction. Uh, system where I have uh, maybe it could be a bubble basin um, where I'm pulling in the water in one end and then I have a cross section of my basin uh, then I might have the the flow of, of water going going down here I have my aeration device at the bottom so I'm pulling in air bubbles air is going up so here I have some counter current situation then I'm pulling a wall here so the water has to go underneath here. Then I have a section where the water is going up. Following the air bubbles, I will also have aeration here. So air is going up. Here I have a co-current process. Uh, I'll put up a wall to force the water over here. And maybe I will have a, a counter-current process uh, in the end. Air bubbling up and water getting out of the system down here. So here I've got some counter-current, co-current, counter-current process. So uh, in this part of the vessel, I will have a, an efficiency 1 over Henry's constant in this part the efficiency will be much less and this if this was an ideal process well I could figure out what would be the flow of gas seen in relation to the flow of water for each compartment since it's not ideal since I will never have full fully equilibrium uh, I will have my my um, my two film theory applying so I will have some concentration in the gas and I will have Henry's constant uh, letting me know what what is the equilibrium or um, in the water interface and then I will have um, well this would be the concentration that would be the water side concentration and the gas concentration 
for, for this mall. So concentration is up here in an axis. So high levels in the gas and I'm stripping it off and this is my air flow. Uh, so where I have a transport of substance from the water to the gas because the gradient here is towards uh, the film and then towards the gas side. I mean, this situation will, will let me, will tell me that my my, I cannot achieve the ideal situation, so that means that my minimum, my actual air-to-water ratio has to be bigger than, than the minimum 